Music is an important part of the cultural identity of Bologna. We see it everywhere, in the International Museum of Music and in the streets, under the beautiful porticos that Bologna is famous for. In my quest to uncover Bologna's musical heritage, I sat down for a conversation with Bruno Stefanini, one of only four professional violin makers a decade after Bologna was appointed UNESCO City of Music. So, how long have you been uh, in the same tradition? Of about uh, 35 years. 35 years? Yes, just about. Okay. Including the years of uh, tuition, the years of school. Okay. And is this a family uh, is business? This a family business? Or? No, it is not. No. Um, okay. I have uh, started, uh, I had the opportunity in, um, to join, to enroll the violin making school here in Bologna. Mm -hmm. Violin making school was not a regular school, it was a project. It was a four year program for uh, selected uh, students. In fact, we had an audition with the uh, violin teacher and uh, our uh, violin teacher, violin maker teacher, mm -hmm. and um, so it was a just a, uh, a, originally was fourteen people, then went up to sixteen because it was a high demand for this uh, uh, project. So the idea of this project was to preserve the violin making tradition in Bologna. Everybody knows about uh, Cremona and Stradivarius and all those names, but very few know of the um, long and, and uh, strong tradition is uh, in, here in Bologna. Mm -hmm. um, so I went to this audition, I got through with the, with the test, and I enrolled the violin making school. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a project, uh, it was supported by the uh, local government and, uh, and uh, comune and uh, um, artigianato and everything. Mm -hmm. um, so, the, um, as I said, the idea was to preserve the violin making tradition and the, uh, the program was for free. We didn't have, didn't have to pay anything. Tuition was for free for four years. Okay. So very lucky, yes. a little lucky uh, program we had. Uh -huh. And I think that's only in Italy that something like that would be encouraged and they, they would see the value in doing that. It, it was, yes. not anymore, unfortunately. Because at that time uh, there was a project, a future project. Uh, the aim, the, the idea is to, to, uh, to think uh, in the future. So. Um, as I said, it was the idea was to preserve the violin making tradition in town, and uh, at that time there were only two violin makers left coming from the old tradition, mm -hmm. and uh, the old tradition comes from the passage from one teacher to the, the pupil to the student. Uh, there are violin making schools that you can enroll, and it's a almost a regular school, mm -hmm. so you have your own class and you do and you do the violin, violins, violas, or guitars, and that thing. But uh, uh, it is not the the the, the way it, it is um, set is not like it used to be when you go to a, a, a teacher shop and you sit with him and he just he doesn't teach, he just passes on his knowledge, and that was the idea of the school. Mm -hmm. So. It used to be like that, like you said, but not anymore. Now everything has to be according to rules and according, of course, to money. Okay. Because yes, but are still a lot of uh, people now uh, interested in following the same career? Oh, there are a lot of people that would love to become a violin maker, mm -hmm. but there are, there are some difficulties nowadays. Uh, for example, if you come in and, and you want to I want you want me to teach you mm -hmm. uh, to make a violin it would be almost impossible because of the uh, re law regulation that means I, I would have to hire you mm -hmm. and pay you of course yes and it is impossible you don't know anything so I yes. have to uh, have to uh, 
uh, you know, invest my time on mm -hmm. you and teaching and uh, go through mistakes and everything. And, uh, as yeah. well as money. As well as money, yes. Mm -hmm. And I have to pay mm -hmm. hourly. Yes. So, yes. so it's not so easy. So there are violin making schools all over Europe mm -hmm. that you can enroll and have uh, and have um, um, pretty good tuition, but it is not the, in the, like in the old-fashioned way. That's the, the, what I said. Yes. And what made you want to become a violin maker? What uh, was your motivation or your inspiration? Um, I played the violin. I picked up the violin when I was uh, four, 14, something like that. Mm -hmm. I already played some music, you know, like guitar, and uh, but I, I, I picked up a violin. I bought a very, very inexpensive uh, violin in a music store. It sounded horrible. And I sounded horrible, and it sounded horrible. It didn't help any. And um, so I had a, uh, about four, three, four years of... Uh, of uh, practice and uh, and try to figure out how the violin played mm -hmm. by by myself, so sort of self-taught in a way. Yes. But I wasn't very good. I have to admit, uh -huh. and the violin wasn't very good either. So and I had the possibility to, uh, to join the school, and uh, one of the requirement for enrolling the violin making school mm -hmm. was uh, a knowledge of. Uh, playing the violin so how you you were supposed to know how to how to play the violin that was one one of the of the um of thing asked by by the by the school mm -hmm. so i said well you know i'll try and mm -hmm. and uh, i got in and from the very first day when i met uh, 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 the teacher mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, it was clear from the very beginning that I wanted to become a violin maker and uh, first of all being a, a violin player is not easy and I started late and I wasn't very good I have mm -hmm. to admit so I thought maybe I'll, I'll become a, a better violin maker than a mediocre Why? violin player when so. did you start uh, playing the, the violin? when? yes uh, at uh, what age? Um, I think maybe 16 something like that mm -hmm. I picked up music when I was a teenager 13 14 and I, I played the guitar a little bit mm -hmm. and and then I remember that one day I went to a music store and bought a violin and the the switch to uh, becoming a violin maker had happened at what age uh, well I enrolled the the, uh, the, school. the, the school when I, I was uh, 19. 19 so it was 1979 Yes. And how many years does it take uh, in the school? Is it like four years? Okay, the, the school was, the program was four years plus three years of, uh, it was uh, um, three more years that, that, that were, uh, include, were including the tuition. So it was uh, altogether, it was almost it was seven years. But the regular school was four years. Okay. And, uh, in four years, one of the first thing my teacher said the very first day of uh, of school said, "This is four year program. It just is, it is not even enough to become a violin maker. Mm -hmm. It will take you ten years to become a violin maker. If you practice, it's like studying. Uh, it's like uh, uh, studying a violin." music it will take you 10 years to become a professional violin maker mm -hmm. and he was totally right yes yes and was it challenging oh yes was it, it was. very competitive uh, not very competitive the school the, the school was um, was a, we were about the same age uh, the, 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 uh, the majority of the students were were about the same age. Mm -hmm. There were a couple of younger one and a couple of older one, but the group, the core, was uh, we were sharing the same same age as a set, mm -hmm. and was were, most of us were sharing the same experiences. So music and uh, artistry, because I was graduated in I'm a sculptor. I was I graduated in art school, mm -hmm. and um, so as other in in um, in 
the school where uh, graduated from art school, painting and uh, different trades. Uh, so it was a very exchanging. It was not, uh, and also the teacher didn't want us to be competitor one each other. Mm -hmm. So it was a very a very good setting for the school. Okay. And you said that you also you were a you are a sculptor as well. Yes. So do you still do that or no? No, no I work on wood, which is it, it is like sculpting is like working on a different material. I worked uh, on marble and stone when I was in art school, mm -hmm. never on wood. And I switched to different tools and a different material. But the idea of, uh, of uh, developing a, a, a shape, a form, mm -hmm. and uh, it, very, it is very close to, to uh, sculpting. But there is one thing more, which is sound and that's a different challenge but that for you must be uh, that that must be the reason why one of the requirements to get into school is to know how to play that, the instrument yes. so you understand yes. Uh, yes what you're making yes. yes also part of the program was uh, uh, there was a special agreement with the music school the music conservatory mm -hmm. and uh, we had uh, free tuition for violin playing so for four years I went to um, to the music conservatory and, and studied violin mm -hmm. in a proper way, not self-taught. Okay. <laughs> That's very nice. And uh, do you only make violins or uh, do you also make any other instruments? I build violins, violas and cellos. Okay. Uh, the same, it's the same family, mm -hmm. just the proportion is a little different. The violin, the, the regular, the regular violin, and the viola is a little bigger, and the cello is the one who plays sitting. Okay. It, it, it is the same, uh, it's the same technique, mm -hmm. same material, just the proportion is different, and time of work is different, of course. Okay, and how uh, how long does it take you to build uh, these instruments, like a violin? Of course, it depends on the size. Let's say to the smallest one, and then how, how how long would it take you to build the biggest one? Oh, a violin takes for a professional maker like mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. it takes about one month of work, okay. a full month of work mm -hmm. to make uh, one violin from scratch, from scratch from wood, yes. <laughs> and uh, a viola just about the same time is just a little bigger, mm -hmm. maybe a few more, maybe one more week. So let's say five weeks. Okay. Cello is a different business. Cello is a, it's about three months of work, mm -hmm. working eight hours a day. Wow. Yeah. So here uh, in your workshop, is it just you, or do you have, uh, do you have any, have you hired someone as well to help? No, you? just me. It's just, just me. you. And my wife that helps me to, to, to do all the um, paperwork mm -hmm. and, uh, and everything. Okay, and. Uh, can we? Uh, can I have a look into your your workshop? Is that possible? Just yeah. maybe like. Uh, that's it. That's it. This is my workshop. So for eight uh, hours a day for one month, this is where you do everything. Yes, this is the table where I work, and and uh, plus that one mm -hmm. uh, used for varnishing and retouching. Okay. Um, I because I also do repairs, okay. and uh, I'm not. Uh, my 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 uh, uh, my work is to build instruments, make new instruments. But musicians break those their instruments, yes. so they bring it in, mm -hmm. and I have to to fix them. So sometimes I have to glue like this one, this one, this violin, uh, one a, a little uh, there was a seam open here. Mm -hmm. And so these are special uh, clamps that uh, keep together the uh, the part. Okay. So this is a repair, and, uh, and so, so uh, let's say maybe fifty percent of my time is repairs, and fifty percent of my time is um, is building mm -hmm. when I when I can manage it. Okay. And uh, yes, this is my workshop, and I do everything here okay. on this day. And uh, did you grow up in Bologna? Well, I grew up in a little village about uh, an hour out of Bologna, mm -hmm. up in, between Florence and Bologna. Yes. And uh, mm, 
then I, when I was in high school, I moved with my brothers in town. Mm -hmm. So I've been living in Bologna since I was uh, 16, 15, 16 years old. And does being here is uh, is it just does it all fit together? Because they say it's the city of music, and it has uh, it does a, a very important musical tradition. I was just at the uh, Museum of Music, mm -hmm. and uh, it seems like uh, this is where you would you know uh, be or you would live if you loved music so much. Yes, it's uh, Bologna has always been a very musical uh, city. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the 70s, um, of course, um, when you relate to violin, violas, and cello, you think of classical music. Yes. But my, let's say, I grew up listening to, to rock and roll mm -hmm. and punk music. And in the 70s, Bologna was the hub of, uh, of rock and punk music. Uh -huh. I wasn't really fond of, of punk music, but, but rock and roll was... Uh, uh, there were hundreds, probably, of uh, local bands uh, formed by youngsters like myself when I was uh, a teenager, mm -hmm. and it was very, very, um, uh, very, very active music-wise. And then uh, I, I, of course, I switched to the, the more tra classical tradition, and I discovered a new world that I didn't know of, mm -hmm. like uh, Teatro Comunale, Academia Filarmonica, and uh, meeting with my teacher was a, a, was a sort of, um, uh, he was sort of a guru. <laughs> yeah. he, was, uh, he was a violin player himself, mm -hmm. uh, a classical violin player, and uh, he sort of introduced me and taught me a lot of, uh, about classical music, which was um, uh, a new work from, uh, from me. Of course, um, uh, my family. My family there was uh, music all the time. And my father was a, uh, an opera fan, mm -hmm. which I hated at the time, as you can understand. <laughs> <laughs> and but now I, I understand better the uh, the quality and the meaning of what he loved. Mm -hmm. And um, I could not stand in opera at all, but. Uh, I, I heard it all the time because they played records at that time. Mm -hmm. So moving in, in town, I was exposed to a, a different uh, kind of music and and um, um, the um, classical world, which in Bologna was has always been uh, very active. In the, and uh, if you think of violin making, and uh, as I said before, uh, um, Nobody knows about the violin making tradition in Bologna, but the uh, violin making tradition is very old. It's one of the oldest probably in Europe, mm -hmm. uh, even older than the Carmona. Um, Bologna was very active. Uh, there, were, there, was a, uh, there have always been a lot of music. And uh, in the 1400, mm -hmm. There were, um, probably at the Museo de Musica, you have seen uh, um, parts of lutes. Lute? You know yes. what a lute is? Yes. You know, it's, a, it's, a, um, it's an ancient uh, instrument yes. that's not played much anymore mm -hmm. and comes from uh, uh, the uh, Northern African yes. tradition. Yes. Lute. Yeah. And that, that where the name comes from. Mm -hmm. Loud, ud. Yes. Ah, that's, that's yes. how. Okay. Loud, yes, liuto, yes. and my trade is liutaio, mm -hmm. but which is a, a little incorrect because uh, it uh, the term liutaio has been generalized uh, by the Encyclopédie Française mm -hmm. when uh, they listed the the uh, um, instrument makers as liutaio. So everybody that. Uh, makes in musical instruments in Italy is a lutaio. But in the old times, I was a, a violin maker, and in Italian is violinaro, okay. as well as a, a guitar maker is a chitarraio. Mm -hmm. So going back to the, the, to the tradition, uh, Bologna was very active in the, um, in the uh, instrument making, and the best instruments, the best lutes, mm -hmm 
uh, made in the world where it was known a little bit less than what it is now. Uh, all the courts in Europe, uh, all the musicians in Europe wanted a lute made in Bologna. So what you've seen, uh, there are just a couple of parts, it's one of the, probably is the uh, ancient, uh, one of the ancient instruments made in Bologna at that time. Mm -hmm. Then music, the music changed its form and its instruments. So the violin and the bowed instruments took over. And the success was in Cremona and the other city in the, in the north of Italy. Mm -hmm. But Bologna was, was not left behind. There were a lot of makers uh, that were active. And Bologna is, is as far as I'm concerned, is the um, the only city that uh, it's uh, never lost its tradition, mm -hmm. and uh, what what I'm talking about is uh, the knowledge passed on from teacher to pupil to students. Mm -hmm. As I said, uh, the violin making school was a was a special program, and the idea was to pass That's the teachers. That's on the tradition, not with regular tuition. Uh, it was very, it was very, um, it was a very easy uh, situation in the, in the violin making school. Mm -hmm. That's good for the tradition. Yes, so it's it has been kept alive mm -hmm. until now. It's great. Uh, so, but you said now it's difficult for somebody to become a violin maker. Yes, it is difficult for the reasons I mentioned, yes. but there are some possibilities. You have to go, there are violin making schools, there are regular yes. um, um, schools, and there's one in Cremona, of course, and there's a couple of private ones in uh, Parma, and there's one in Germany, one in France. So if you want to become a violin maker, mm -hmm. there are the possibilities to start with a, a regular with a school tuition and then you have to to um, uh, build your own reputation mm -hmm. and choose a style and are there many violin makers now in bologna we're about uh, five uh, no four makers in bologna professional makers okay. Uh, it's a kind of trade that you can embrace as an amateur if you want to. Uh, although I know a lot of people that enjoy making instruments, but they're not made in the professional way. Mm -hmm. As and, uh, I mean, uh, with uh, with uh, a professional uh, approach. So you need to choose the right material. You need to to have. The, of course, a professional result yes. because the, because the instruments I built mm -hmm. are are meant to be played by uh, professional players. Okay. So you can make uh, a, a violin if you if you want to, but I'm sure it, the result is a amateur. amateur. So it's very important then that this tradition be passed on for it to continue in Bologna. Oh because yes. As you said, there are only four professional violin makers. Yes. So it's uh, extremely important. It is. It should not be lost. It is. Mm -hmm. So we, some way, we have to um, to solve this problem of uh, tuition. Mm -hmm. so, so it 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 is not possible for me to have a. Um, there, as I, as I mentioned, there are some uh, regulation, law regulation that. Uh, um, are meant to to pro to protect the worker, yes. of course, but uh, in the other hand, it's uh, it's difficult for me mm -hmm. to. Uh, the good a good idea probably would be uh, have a like a course or a, a program like the one I attended to, yes. but I don't know how can it be made. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you for taking the time to sure, talk to us. Sure. <laughs> Grazie a tutti.